Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna go over the TMG Alpha 15 laser jammer and specifically how to wire everything up and how to use the system. We're gonna go over all the different ports, what they do, what plugs in where, uh, all the different buttons on the system and how you actually use it in practice. So with that said, let's go ahead and plug everything in and take a closer look at this. Now a key point to remember whenever you're shooting laser, safety first. Now, starting off here with the three primary buttons on top, we've got our button for receive, sleep slash report, and update. Now, in normal operation, this is what the system is gonna look like. All three LEDs here for all three buttons are gonna be turned off. When it's set up this way, the jammer is gonna jam for four seconds and then it will automatically disarm itself. And well, let's go ahead and try that out. Arm the laser. laser dragon eye compact auto sleep on so as you can see when the system started going off it alerted us to laser it told us uh, what gun was being shot and even had the uh, front arrow right here that would light up if you're getting shot in the front that'll go off if you get shot in the rear that arrow will go off now as far as the different buttons here uh, we press this button Receive only mode. that'll set it to receive only mode where basically it's detection only but it will not jam the gun auto sleep mode this is auto sleep mode, meaning it's going to jam for four seconds and then go to sleep after four seconds and disable your jammers for you automatically. Now to show you this, uh, let's hop inside real quick where it's gonna be darker and just easier for the camera to see the pulses coming out of the laser jammer. If you look, take a look at the head, uh, this middle dot right here, that's where the uh, transmitter is installed behind, so we'll take a look there. Uh, now let's go ahead and take a look at what the uh, auto JTK looks like and when the jammer actually stops uh, firing the laser. So you can see after it uh, finishes saying auto sleep on, that's when the jammers will disarm. Now what happens if you want to disable the jammers manually? Uh, let's take a look at how that works. We're gonna switch it to test mode, which is gonna be this middle button right here. Test mode. And that's gonna give us unlimited jamming capabilities. And now to manually JTK the jammers, there's uh, two ways to do it. Number one, we can uh, press this button over here, receive mode, uh, or we can press the power button. So let's take a look at that real quick. We'll start with the receive mode. So, if you noticed right there, uh, it didn't actually disable the jammers instantly. There was a, uh, an update recently to help improve this. Uh, in the past, there were some issues where if the jammer was talking, it couldn't actually disable the jammers. Front laser. Marksman or ultralight 2020. Receive only mode. There we go but they've uh, improved this since. It looks like it's not totally perfect. It doesn't always do it, but let's take a look at that again real quick. Test mode. All right, let's go ahead and try a second manual JTK. Receive only mode. So you can see that time, as soon as I press the button, it went ahead and uh, instantly disabled the jammers, which is really good. Uh, now this issue, the whole thing is um, when it's talking, uh, it can't also do like button pressing stuff. So they've done some improvements here. It's not totally resolved as you can see, but it is much better. Let's uh, try it again. Uh, just a third time real quick. Receive only mode. So you can see that time it worked as well, which is great. Now the other way to uh, manually disable your jammers is by hitting the power button right here. So let's do that this time. System off. There we go. And then just uh, pressing the power button, the whole system disarms or well, powers down. And then of course the jammer stopped firing too. Next, let's take a quick look at what happens if you had it set to uh, the auto JTK, so four second JTK, and you press the receive button to try to uh, disable the jammers more quickly. Let's take a look at that. Front receive only mode. So you can see uh, we do have the ability to disable the jammers more quickly uh, if we like, but again, it's not 100% here with this jammer. Uh, if you're looking for more consistent jamming to reliably do it every single time, something you can actually do is wire in uh, an external power kill switch that you can just uh, press the button and it will instantly cut power to the system entirely and 100% of the time will shut it off. Front. So that's a good option. You can see uh, we've got the receive button here or the power button. They're not 100%, but that is how you do it. Uh, these other two buttons here, they're not gonna allow you to JTK. Uh, this, like here, we'll just show you real quick. So you can see that'll switch us into unlimited jamming capability, or we can turn that off and put it back into four second auto JTK. But as you can see, 
that's not actually disabling the jammers until the four second JTK just kicked in there. So as you can see, that middle button is not gonna work. And the same thing with the uh, the update button. Here, let's do this. Turn our jammers back on. And if we press the update button, let's say we press that by mistake. That is also not going to disable our jammers. And we saw it finished early just because I've, well, I've got my uh, tester here and I stopped transmitting. But uh, anyways, you can see if you want to JTK, you've pretty much got the receive button here or you've got the power button. It is improved over previous iterations, but it's still not quite 100% here. So uh, yeah, again, if you want 100%, you know, the ability to disable the jammers when you want and not always relying on the auto JTK, you can wire in your own power kill switch. Plus, as a bonus, if you're going to be... Uh, tucking this away somewhere in your cabin anyways it just gives you a dedicated control or dedicated button especially if that one is going to be physically blocked and out of the way now the reason this button says sleep and not like test mode or something is if you press it again auto sleep mode. it returns back to auto sleep mode so with the led on it's going to do uh, unlimited jamming but as you can see there's some issues with it in practice it's just for test purposes so in practice you're going to want it like this now it's sleep slash report if you press and hold the report button self-spot reported Self-spot reported. Okay, well, I don't have it connected to my phone right now, but if I did, it would report uh, to the cloud using the TMG app uh, that, hey, I've spotted an alert here. A lot like reporting an alert to Escort Live or to Waze. And then other drivers who are also running the TMG app will get that police spotted alert. Uh, now, speaking of the phone, if you want to update your jammers, the way that you do that is you press the update button here. Algorithm update. Open app. Select new algorithm and enable Bluetooth. Then you can take your phone and connect it to your laser jammers. Uh, it's a little bit finicky for it to work. It's currently only on Android. iOS is still in development, but you have to basically uh, find the Bluetooth connection with your phone. It's going to say LD, and there might be one or two of them you're going to need to connect. And then you go into the app and then fire up the laser jamming update process, and you're going to be able to update the laser jamming algorithm. Uh, again, it's a little bit finicky. You might have to play with it a little bit, but that is how it works. There's another app that's now available too. It's called TMG Remote, and this is it right here. It's developed by John Boy, the guy who made JBV1. It's an Android app, and it adds a bunch of really cool features to the TMG. If we take a look, for example, and we go into the settings, uh, there are a bunch of different things that we can go in and adjust. Uh, you can see if we want to take a look at uh, the automatic JTK time. Again, the default is four seconds, which I'll take a closer look at here in just a second. Let's say for the demo, uh, we'll set it to three seconds. You can also adjust how long it takes until the jammer rearms after it automatically disarms. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. We'll put it into uh, test, mode. test mode like this, and let's go ahead and trigger the jammer. So you can see it took three seconds. It was displaying front arrow because we were getting shot in the front. And then the jammer, boom, big X, automatically disarmed, which is really cool. Something else I really like about the app is even if you're running something else in the foreground, like Google Maps or something, it can actually pop up the alert and you have the ability to tap on screen to instantly JTK. Uh, let's take a look at that. So as you can see, uh, the alert will just pop right up on screen, even if the app is backgrounded, which is really cool. And then we can just tap right on the display and it will instantly disable the jammers, which is really cool. Now, something else that I noticed, and this is kind of weird, uh, if you have it set to the four second auto JTK that it's supposed to have, I didn't realize this until I was running the app, but it's actually longer than four seconds. Uh, take a look at this real quick. You can see that alert was closer to, what, maybe eight seconds or so. It was a lot longer than four. Um, I didn't realize it, again, until I had the timer here. But yeah, they're four-second JTK. It's longer than I realized. So that, I guess, gives us another reason to uh, make sure we're running something like this to do a better job of controlling the timer. And that looks like that is something that they need to address, is to make sure the four-second JTK actually is a four-second JTK. Now, taking a look at the other buttons here, we have our uh, power button, of course, to turn the system on and off. Uh, we also have our volume switches, so we can set it from uh, volume level 1 to 15. Uh, 15, of course, is the loudest, and you can experiment with it to see what works best in your car. Uh, now, moving on to the back side of the CPU, this is where we have all the different ports to plug in different heads. Uh, so we've got a power connector here, and we also have a second power connector right there. This one is going to be used if you're using the, uh, the cigarette lighter power cable. Uh, if you're using the hardwire one, it would go in here. Uh, now, we've got ports for four different transponders, transponder 1, 
one, two, three, and four. The front ones are always going to go into ports one and two. Uh, ports three and four can be set to be uh, either four front heads like this, or if you want these ones to be your rear heads, you would control that here with the dip switch. And so uh, you can see right now the dip switches are pointed up, which means transponders three and four are going to be set to uh, rear heads. If I wanted these ports to be front, I would then flip these two down and these two ports would now be for my front heads. Now, if you'd like more than four heads plugged in total, the way that you can do that is you can use a splitter. The splitter will allow two heads to plug into one port. It's also kind of nice because it means running just one cable out of here instead of two, but ultimately the reason it's there is if you want more than four heads total, or if you want to do, you know, maybe three in the front and two in the back or something, you would have uh, three heads plugged into here, one of them using a splitter, and then two heads here just using the normal cables. Or you could have maybe a splitter for this one and then two heads connected to that. So you do have some options as far as how you hook all this up. Now this port here, RDT, is for a radar detector. Uh, TMG also makes some remote mount radar detector heads that could plug into there. Honestly, they're not that great, and I don't even think they're going to sell them here in the U.S. So this one is going to be unused, but currently I guess it would also be an optional uh, maybe expansion port if they want to add some additional functionality or plug something else into there. But for most of us, this port is going to be unused. And then speaking of unused ports, if we take a look here at the uh, USB port here for data, that's also for firmware updates and whatnot, but uh, that's not something that we're going to use. We're going to do everything here with the uh, phone and the update button there. And then that's just like a reset button if you need it uh, just to reset everything here. But uh, in short, you can see there's not really much to it. You just kind of wire it into power, plug in your heads, leave all this stuff alone, and your system will just kind of take care of itself. It'll jam for four seconds and it'll automatically disarm. You can try manually disabling the jammers, but it doesn't actually work that reliably or consistently. So if you want manual JTK, and that would be great, of course, you could just wire in your own manual kill switch to shut power off to the system entirely, or, well, and or you can just rely on the four second automatic JTK. So yeah, there you go. There's a look here at the uh, TMG Alpha 15, the buttons, ports, and how everything works. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.